Well, good morning. I'm a little past the time that I said I was going to come on live, but my previous call went a little bit longer as well. I had a feeling that might happen, so I'm only about a minute out, but hey, I'm here. Good morning, my friends. Welcome to Coffee and Conversation with Simone. Um, your little dose of calm. I've decided that that's what it's all about, really, isn't it? Finding a little piece of calm, a little bit of stillness, a little bit of centeredness in the current yeah, madness and mayhem. Good morning, I, Vanessa, darling. How are you doing today? How are you feeling? Um, I hope you're kind of slowly coming back to health. Good morning, Karen. Oh, oh, my friends are here. This is nice. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, Rhiannon, good morning. Karen, good morning. Lovely to have your company here today. Um, I've realised, you know, that how important finding a way to connect with people in a way that's different to the way we would have normally done it. Text messages are great, but sometimes, you know, for some people it's about hearing a voice as well. And um, over time I might even shift these to Zoom so that if you want to talk to me, you can. But for now I'll leave them as the Facebook lives. But if you'd like me to swap, I'd be really curious about whether that would work for you. Would you like me to swap this to doing like a Zoom session so that you can actually interact? with me would that work for you if so can you put a why in the comments um, it'd be really interesting for me to know that if that is helpful for you however for the moment this is the format that I'm going to continue to share in and let's face it at least with the Facebook algorithms you get a chance to um, like reach more people in a way because when people see that you're on live it's like oh I'm going to come in and join in for a bit so good morning Davida thank you for joining me uh, welcome to my live so today's um, coffee comes to you courtesy of Les Miserables um, and now uh, those of you who know me know my uh, theatre background and I've actually directed Les Mis twice. I've been had the great good fortune to direct it in, let me see, the first year was 2005 and then I repeated it, The Madness, <laughs> in 2009, both for uh, community productions here in Brisbane. Um, and there's something really magical about a show such as Les Mis and actually that pertains to some of the things I want to talk about today so it's very apt um, Brad got the mug for me and he said oh, I think you need to have the Les Mis mug today so <laughs> it's um, oh lovely thank you that you're joining me for your coffee break I really appreciate that um, you know one of the things so there are uh, Les Mis if I might just talk about this for a little bit and um, Les Mis has um, these universal themes um, about, uh, there's a couple of universal themes in this, um, which is about, uh, the principal one is about love, but there's also about redemption. So the, the principal character, Valjean, for him, it's the road to redemption by, um, by embracing love. Ron, oh my goodness, hello. So Ron comes to us all the way from the US. How are you doing over there? Um, I hope you and I think it's a leader, your wife, if I have the right, right name in my head. Lovely to have your company and Heather as well. So I'm just talking about Les Mis at the moment because that's my coffee cup of choice today. And I'm talking about those universal themes um, that Les Mis is all about. And the, the theme of love, and there's, of course, unrequited love because otherwise, you know, you can't have a good story without unrequited love. But there's also the, the, the a core concept is about love. Um, and Victor Hugo is the most extraordinary writer. And, you know, that's the, uh, the book, Les Mis, um, is what was used as the core, the source material for the musical, of course. And he writes something, um, uh, uh, he writes a lot about love in the book that's not able to be expressed fully in the musical. But there are some core things in there around love and redemption. So the redemption piece is actually about um, self-love. And I talked about this uh, yesterday and I think the day before as well, um, how important that is at the moment for us all is to just take time to take stock 
um, and to just sit in our heart space and allow ourselves to feel what we need to feel, to allow ourselves to grieve what needs to be grie uh, grieved. And I think for many of us, we are finding, you know, we are on such uncertain ground. Our feet are constantly shifting. We're constantly trying to find um, our balance in this new world order. So today I wanted to focus on a couple of messages and, and hopefully something that you can take away, uh, not just, you know, uh, with your morning cup of coffee, but also something that you can take away to think about over the next couple of days. So yesterday I talked about my book, Everyday Presence, and the importance of being present in your life. And if I, I might just reiterate what I talked about for a moment, is that when we're willing to be present in our life, when we don't have an agenda attached, like, okay, like, I'm, I'm, yes, I'm going to be present, but by the time I'm finished being present, I expect this situation to have changed. You know, I hate to break the news to you, but that doesn't happen like that. So being present is about a willingness to show up as yourself and a willingness to embrace whatever is at this moment in time. And so how this links in then to Les Mis is for me, is that that core theme that goes throughout of of um, forgiveness and redemption and uh, but principally love uh, love initially for ourselves but also reaching out and having love and compassion for our fellow human beings and oh hello chris nice to have you here hi sheena um and Christy, oh my goodness, so nice to have you here. So yeah, grab your cuppers and come and join me. I'll be talking for a little while, so <laughs> if the last couple of lives are anything to go on. <laughs> I do talk for a little bit, don't I? But you know, this is what I just feel it's really what's needed at the moment is to find that per, that that sense of connectedness with each other and to find a place where we feel heart connected and absolutely sheena um that heart space that's that's what we need to sit in at the moment is our heart space you know the time for the head space uh, and being driven by our heads and i talked about it um as being head strong uh, the other day you know the time for that is past what is happening now is that we're in being invited to sit in our heart space and to actually feel that connection with each other, heart to heart to heart, the world over. And if we can do that, then we start to tap in to the compassion that we can have for each other. And so instead of judging people who are still um, maybe not doing what needs to be done in terms of physical distancing and you know following some of those uh, the health directives that um, have been put in place to to essentially uh, protect us at this moment so that we um, have got a life and a living to go back to so you know it's important um, but there are always going to be people who are going to rebel against that kind of directive and so instead of judging them what I'm going to ask you to do is to just to sit in your heart space when you see examples of that and just going, oh, I'm so over all these people who are flouting all the rules and they walk really close to me and, you know, I don't like it. So instead of going into judgment, because what that does is just contribute to the fear and the angst and the worry and it's not not really helping you or anyone else because when you go into that space you stop being compassionate so sure there are people who aren't necessarily doing the right thing but what you can do is lead by example and one of the ways that you can do that is to lead from your own heart to sit in your heart space and allow yourself to just feel that compassion and flow that compassion out into the world and even it's if it's your your little piece of paradise where you are right now your home or wherever you are located wherever your feet are right at this moment as i speak to you so from where you are right now so why don't we do this as a collective i've got quite a few of you online with me at the moment <clears throat> 
So why don't we all just take a moment, you know, grab your coffee, whatever you've got to hand, your glass of water, whatever it might be. And I'm just going to ask you to do just this one little thing with me right now. Think of all, you know, like think of all the busyness, like all the stuff that's been going on in your head. Oh, my God, I've got to do this. I've got to get to the shops. I've got to go buy this. Um, uh, what if I call the lockdown like today? And um, what if I starve and, you know, my cats end up eating me? You know, like there's all this like um, incredibly... Uh, incredible amount of fear. Um, <laughs> yeah, thank you, Brad. I'm going to talk about that in just a moment. Uh, there's a, there's an incredible amount of fear, and if we continue to contribute to that, that, we're just going to see more of that in our world. Whereas if we just take a moment and say, "Okay, I'm just going to I'm just going to let that go for just this moment, just as long as it takes to have a cup of coffee with me," right? Just for your little bit of calm, for your dose of calm today, I'm going to ask you to just let go of all that busyness in your head. I'm not going to ask you to meditate with me because, hey, I might even fall asleep on you. And that would be interesting. Uh, I'm not going to ask you to do that. What I'm going to ask you is to just take a moment to just let that fall away. So take a moment and just, you don't have to think about it. It's not a thinking process. It's not a cognitive process. I'm just going to allow you, you to feel all of that, all the busyness, all of the striving, the must do, the pushing through that we're seeing. Just allow that to kind of like dissolve, almost as if, you, you know, you've, you're washing your brain, you know. <laughs> Happy birthday to me. Okay, you're washing your brain sing it uh, singing okay sing as you'd like and just let it fall away okay you're getting a sense of that just let that calm flow through you now i want you to literally allow your awareness to just drop into your heart just allow it to yeah ever so gently just drop into your heart ah, and just exhale breathe and take a moment and just inhale. So let's all of us as a collective on this call with me today, let's just ripple that beautiful sense of calm and peace and love. Just take a moment to really just embrace that in your heart space. Breathe into it and just feel your body relax. And now, because you're all magical beings, you're all magical unicorns, and you can do this with me, I'm going to ask you to just ripple that out to your house. Just ripple it out. Let the love, the gratitude for being safe, the gratitude for the roof that shelters you, the gratitude for walls that embrace you. And just let that love and that gratitude ripple out into your immediate environment and anyone who is in that environment with you. And just let it ripple out. And now I'm going to ask you to ripple it out to the edges of your suburb. Can you do that for me? Can you just take a moment and just feel into that heart, feel the love and the gratitude that you have a roof over your head, that you have walls that embrace you, that help you feel safe and connected because, hey, isn't technology a wonderful thing? And isn't the heart a wonderful thing? So just feel yourself connect there. Let it ripple out through the walls of your house, right to the edges of your suburb. Can you do that? Awesome. And now just allow that beautiful love and gratitude for where you are right now. Just let that ripple beyond the edges of your suburb into the city in which you are currently residing. So just let it ripple out. And we're just going to do this as a beautiful way to stay heart connected with each other, city to city, continent to continent. And you know what? You can ripple that love and that gratitude right out to embrace the whole world, to embrace planet Earth. And this is something that you can do every single day. It will take you less than a minute. All you need to do is to sit quietly, get out of your head, drop into your heart space, and then just ripple that love and that gratitude for being alive at this moment and just allow that to ripple out, okay? Because gratitude at this time is incredibly important. But if we can connect with each other, if we can actually feel like we do have a physical connection, even though it might be through technology, if we continue to tap into the fact that we are all connected and that what I do today has a ripple effect on 
um, the rest of humanity. And so when we sit in that space, our choices become a lot clearer. We're not being, um, we're not being guided by our ego. We're actually being guided by our heart. And I think that this is one of the most important things as um, human beings that we can do right now is to really connect heart to heart, to look out for each other, to reach out to people if you know that they're struggling. Is there something that you can uh, do, is, you know, if you're able to still get around, if you're able to shop? Are you able to help somebody else who maybe is in a situation that is a little bit more challenging than that? So every single day, taking a moment to just get out of that busy headspace, which is um, governed by, often governed by fear and governed by this, like, I, I have to do something to survive, you know. And to me, that is a, oh, okay, Danielle, absolutely. Okay, so everyone, Danielle's in a really volatile high school situation at the moment. So how about we all as a collective, because we can do this because we're all connected heart to heart now. How about we all as a collective, can we all, and just do it to the screen because Danielle's watching, can you all just ripple uh, some love to Danielle um, to help her uh, deal with and to help her manage the situation that she's in at the moment. So, Danielle, from my heart to yours, sending you so much love um, and calm and peace that you can actually help just bring that to more of a sense of balance for you right now. So if we can all do that for you and send that out to you. See, that is how we help each other. That is how we support each other. And yes, I have a business. You have a business, Danielle. And so I know you've gone back into the teaching because, you know, some of the other business that you do isn't as viable right now. And there are many of you who are having to do the same. So there's ways that we can choose to connect with each other and support each other just by sending each other um, just a little bit of heart love, a little bit of, you know, that. Yeah, you know, that's actually really hard to do. I think you've got to do it like that, haven't you? <laughs> there you go. If we can all send a little bit of that and Danielle, yeah, absolutely sending you some love and peace and guidance for the days um, and hours ahead. Um, so the other piece that I want to talk about, you know, with, uh, with my view of Les Miserables and the core concept of... Um, of self-love actually is what the the is at the core of that story is that universal story of um that we are all the same under the skin is one of the and you know Valjean as he goes through the his transformation so Valjean starts as a convict and if you've watched the film or you've seen this uh, this production live anywhere you'll recall that he starts as a convict and over time he continually reinvents himself, you know, and how apt is that as a metaphor for business right now? Um, you know, we're not pivoting, we're not swerving, we are transforming. So because a pivot suggests that we, we are just, we're, we're forcing ourselves to go into a different direction, we're swerving to avoid the obstacles. What if we were to actually transmute that word and to transmute all of the fear into recognizing that this is a transformational process. Our businesses are undergoing transformation. We are undergoing transformation. We are being asked to look at life through a really, really different lens. So Valjean starts as a convict, he moves through, he decides to reinvent himself. And because he is shown love, and if you know the story, you'll know that that love shows up in the form of a bishop with two candlesticks. He is offered a choice to change the way he is living his life. Hi, Craig. Hi, Bonnie and Graham. Lovely to have your company here this morning. I'm actually talking about Les Miserables. How appropriate is that? Because Craig was in uh, my very first production in 2005 and played an exceptionally um, well-researched drunk, I thought. <laughs> And I'm sure you'll appreciate that little joke, Craig. Um, anyway, I'm I, getting off the track. Um, so 
by tra he is transformed by love. So the bishop hands him two candlesticks, an opportunity to redeem his life and turn his life around, to transform the person he was into someone different through an act of generosity, through an act of love. And as he goes through his life, good morning, Haley. lovely to have you here. As he goes through, as Valjean from Les Miserables um, I'm talking about, and as he goes through his life, he transforms um, every experience that he has, transforms him. It shows him the way forward. It shows him the next little step. Uh, he, rest, he is kind. He he makes amends so this is a other theme of redemption he makes amends for having um done wrong by people in the past so he makes amends for that by rescuing the child of fontaine so fontaine is um one of the other the characters and she is the epitome of um of uh, pathos so if you know anything about aristotle's three um the core uh, themes of influence, ethos, pay, um, logos, and pathos. So in Les Miserables, I'm just going to digress because I've got some speakers on the call with me and they might really enjoy this piece as well. So Aristotle has those three elements of influence, which is ethos, um, ethics, credibility, um, uh, sorry, logos, which is all about logic and pathos. And the three principal characters in Les Miserables are um, Valjean, who is the um, ethos, which is about um, ethics um, and integrity. Logos, which is Javert, who's all about doing things the right way, the power of the law, logical, thinking things through in a very logical way. And then you have Fontaine, who is the epitome of pathos, which is the heart connection. And so those three, that triangle um, of people, um, uh, they're, they're, those themes are threaded right throughout the musical Les Miserables. And so that theme of, um, of that redemption through love is really what I'm talking about right now. And so when Valjean recognises that he can create greater good, uh, he can be a new man, if you like, that he can reinvent himself, that he can transform. He does it through acts of love and selflessness. And so he rescues Fontaine's child and he um, takes her under his wing. He then, um, he does lots of other things. Like he does, um, uh, gives to charity in, in his local town. He looks after the local, um, uh, the residents of that town by setting up a factory and making sure they have work. So he does a lot of this, this thing, these things, but the core right through all of that is that he is redeemed by love. So he finds his way forward through love. And I think that that is so relevant to where we find ourselves right now. And, you know, I don't care if you think that I'm being airy fairy or woo woo or whatever, you know, that's just a point of view. I think it's really important that right now we are all tapping into that energy because there are people, there are so many people struggling right now and they need, uh, they need support, they need help, they need guidance. And whether that is physical, whether you're able to do that in a physical way, or whether it is simply that we ripple out love and we stay heart connected through, through this time. You know, and I think that there are many who are feeling incredibly isolated through whether it's they've had to self isolate or whether they just don't have a lot of people around. So this is a way that we can, we can help. We can reach out. We can make phone calls. We can do things like this, get on Facebook Live and, and chat and uh, help people to see the bigger picture, that it's the more that we step into the fear, the more we step into the angst, um, the more of that we will see. Whereas if we're able to just um, dissolve that, if we're able to just let go of that and, and recognise that, yes, these are challenging times, but they're also an incredible opportunity for us to really see the power of ourselves, first and foremost, and the power of connectedness. And 
Hello, Renee and Joe and Faye. Oh, lovely to see you and Melanie and Greg. Oh, gosh, there's so many uh, beautiful souls here on this call with me this morning. How delightful. Big hugs and, you know, virtual hugs to you all. Thank you for joining me. So I'm talking about essentially the need for um, love in our lives at this moment and to... Uh, the piece that goes with that actually is is the compassion um, and caring. Yeah, absolutely, Renee. I would agree with that. That uh, is that how important it is um, to to care for each other. So um, Brad mentioned earlier in the commentary that we decided to go for a walk, and we wanted to go and walk down at the river and uh, we have a lovely a beautiful walk along the um, coronation drive here in brisbane where there's a lovely bike path and um and it's, you know like in the height of summer or any time really it's always fairly crowded but we thought oh there probably won't be as many people around and and they'll be sensible you know they'll keep apart wrong <laughs> We went down there and the walk to the river was pleasant. It was lovely and we were, there weren't very many people around and so we, were, had, we had space and we could breathe and we weren't really worried about, you know, physical distancing and that kind of thing. And we got down to the bike path and there weren't that many bikes but, gosh, there were a lot of people walking and they were, like, walking that close to you. And we probably didn't even get 100 feet down the bike path and went, you know what, this is not working for me. We both like literally had that same awareness at the same time. And I am actually walking two metres behind Brad. I'm not even walking side by side. Lots of people walking side by side, literally brushing up against you. It's like, peoples, this is not right. But instead of going into the fear and, oh, my God, oh, my God, somebody's breathed on me and what if they've given me the germs, um, it was just, okay, we were both really aware that we were not comfortable. And so we turned around and we left and walked elsewhere where we felt we had space and that we could observe appropriate physical distancing where we needed to. And, and it was that. It was the awareness. It's not the judgment, oh, my God, so many people doing stupid, crazy things at the moment still. It wasn't a, yeah, okay, those words themselves are a judgment. I absolutely recognise and own that. But in that moment, it's like, oh, my God, this is not working for me. So it was about the awareness. And this is something that we are being called upon to access even more at the moment, is our own personal awareness of when we're comfortable or when we're not. And that is about love. You know, if you love yourself well enough to take care of yourself, then you're going to really start to use your your intuition for places where you feel like this is this isn't right. Even you know, like shopping, and if you you know need to go out, kind of just saying to yourself, okay, does it feel like this would be a good time to go? And paying attention to those messages um, that you're receiving, I think, is really important. Um, but initially, like um, I had. Just as it is at the beginning of every one of these, you know, coffee and conversations, I have a sense of what I would like to talk about. And sometimes it's driven by the mug. <laughs> you know, the other day I had a chorus line mug and I talked about the chorus line and my experience of it. So I know that my background in theatre is something that, you know, I'm incredibly grateful for because it's connected me with so many beautiful people all around the world. And... Um, a number of you are on the call with me right now. <laughs> like, for instance, Faye's on the call with me now. Faye's up in Mackay, and Faye's been my choreographer for the show. So she was choreographer Phantom of the Opera that I directed up there uh, to well, 18... How long ago was it? Faye, I can't even remember. Two years ago, roughly. And, uh, you know, it's... I, I love that this is an opportunity for me to connect with people who I can't see face to face, but this is a way that I can see. But I think the connection, this whole piece around connection is so vitally important at the moment. Um, oh, Louise, thank you. That is a beautiful message. Thank you. Gratefully received. Um, and I know that this is my role. I actually, you know, like I'm owning that space at the moment because I know how important it is for us to um, shift from this um, fearful thinking, oh, my God, the world is coming to an end. It is not. The world is transforming. And just like I was talking about Jean Valjean and Les Miserables, and I'm going to have a mouthful of coffee because otherwise it's going to be cold. 
um, and just like Valjean in Les Miserables, Les Miserables, that will do, in Les Miserables, um, he is transformed through love. And so I think that is my message for you today, is to find those moments where you can let go of the busyness, let go of the the striving and, you know, thinking, oh, well, I, I'm going to have to pivot my business. I'm going to have to try new things. Well, sure, try new things. But this is a time also for us to try one thing that maybe we haven't done a great deal of in the past, and that is to be with ourselves. That is to take time to find out who we are to take time, just like Jean Valjean had to, when everything else has been stripped away. When, when he tears up his papers, his, his um, past, you know, that basically labels him as a convict for the rest of his life, he tears that up and he says, this is not who I am. I'm not a number. I'm not 24601. I'm Jean Valjean. I have a name. I own it. What if you, for just for today, were to own who you are? Yep, all of our flaws, all of our inconsistencies, our fear, but most importantly, our love. If you took a moment to just, I say just, it's, it's a big thing, it's not a just, just. If you took a moment to embrace who you are, if you strip away the trappings of of striving and pushing through this time because hey you know by may it'll be business as normal folks it won't it will never be business as normal because the normal has shifted and i'm not saying this to make you fearful i'm saying this to give you hope because there will be different ways of doing business there will be different ways that we're going to be connecting with each other there's going to be different ways of sharing our messages each and every one of us and that doesn't matter what platform you're using whether you do it like this or whether you find a different way to connect with your friends like the the people in Italy singing and on their balconies or coming out and clapping at the end of each evening to applaud all of the frontline workers things like that there are so many wonderful examples of kindness, caring and compassion out there in the world. If we start to focus on that, if we start to focus on looking for that every day instead of looking for the latest, um, you know, deaths or what's going on, sure, I'm not saying don't be informed. It's important to stay informed, but it's also important to look for, look for the love every day. and. Um, Bonnie, absolutely. That is exactly, you know, and it's like, oh my God, it's almost like a, a no brainer question, isn't it? When you ask it like that, um, could this awfulness actually be bringing unity and peace to our world? Hello. Yes, because we are suddenly seeing that you and I are the same. Okay, our outward trappings are different but we are the same. And when we connect through love, when we connect through heart, we suddenly recognise, oh, my God, like all of the things that have divided us are, are inconsequential. We are the same. So, yes, it is starting to bring a sense of unity and peace to the world. And, Craig, absolutely, I spoke about stillness yesterday, like the entire Facebook Live was essentially about stillness. Um, and in fact, I shared from my book, Everyday Presence, I actually shared um, a moment of stillness. And I invited people yesterday to take a 10 second pause in their day and be still and just allow themselves to be in that moment of just stopping and being completely still and just allowing yourself to drop out of your head and into your heart and be still in that moment. And yes, it's always been something that I have found to be uh, really helpful for me, uh, not just uh, on stage, but off stage as well, is to take that pause, that moment of stillness. And what is happening is that as the the noise starts, because there's still, let's face it, there's still a heck of a lot of noise out there. But if we can, um, I wrote something this morning about that. Oh, yeah. Okay. So this is probably, there's a heck of a lot of messages and there'll be different messages for each and every one of you. So I just 
talk, right? I just open my mouth and whatever needs to be said comes out and I don't have a point of view about what that is I just know that there will be little pieces that will serve each one of you in a totally different way or not that's also perfectly okay what I wrote this morning was um, was to tune into your knowing and not the noise so repeat after me <laughs> I'm kidding <laughs> you don't have, you don't have to do that uh, but I'm going to say it again tune into your knowing and not the noise so what is your knowing trying to alert you to just like I explained like you know when we we're walking on the bike path our knowing was this is not where we are comfortable we want to get out of this space that was our knowing and you know you would have had situations like that when you were, your intuition is saying to you you know this doesn't feel right I'm not comfortable um, I either need to remove myself from the situation or something needs to change so our intuition is there and it's, it's in overdrive for us all at the moment. It's like trying to alert us to what is essential for our well-being. So in that instance, when we realised we were at risk on that bike path because there were just so many people and they were just not being respectful um, of each other's distance, we just went, you know, our inner knowing was let's get out of here. And we paid attention to that. We didn't ignore it. We literally turned around after 100 feet and went back the other way um, and got ourselves out of that, that um, environment. So what is your knowing trying to let you know about amidst all the noise? And the noise that I refer to is the noise that is um, created by the fear. You know, like the, and there is a lot of fear marketing at the moment there's a lot of um, embedded messages of fear in the media as well so you know they they speak about things and and particularly if you follow any of the clickbait that's you know on Facebook and stuff like that there's a lot of fear marketing now's the time to do all of this do all of that and there's a lot of doing going on so knowing and tuning into your knowing is about recognizing that you have that space of um, of being heart-centered, of being connected through the heart. And your knowing is actually just asking you to step into that rather than into the noise. Feel free to dip into the noise if you want to every now and then. That's entirely your uh, prerogative to do that. However, I'm inviting you to consider how much karma you will feel if you actually tap into that inner knowing, if you recognize that this is a pause for us all and it is an opportunity for us all to start this transformation pro, uh, process um, of of how we live our lives and how we connect with each other how we as Bonnie said how we could bring more unity and peace to our world and that's exactly why I've decided to be doing the Facebook lives because I recognize that this is a way that I can help transmute the noise the fear into love and help transmute the fear into um, recognition that this is, there is something bigger afoot here there's a, 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 a bigger picture here and sure some of the little day-to-day -day things are, can be incredibly inconvenient and can make us feel even more isolated but it's really important now that we do reach out so I'm going to ask you right now, so just as we did our little ripple of love, and for those of you who are just joining me, hello, um, uh, please um, go back to the beginning of the Facebook Live because I do a little um, love ripple, okay? <laughs> so I'm going to ask you all to, um, let's finish off with um, another, um, let's just do an, a beautiful energetic love blast if you like, well, maybe soft, a soft blast. Blast doesn't really kind of work with that word, does it? But what I'm doing is like, I literally want you to just join me again in sending a ripple of love out into your community. Hi, Kathy, lovely to have you here. Send a ripple of love out into your community. You know, start from wherever you are right now, watching this with me right now. I want you to join me in sending like, okay, just let go of all the noise. Just take a moment. 
stop watching all the other things you're watching on Facebook or anywhere else and just come back to me right now. Be present. <laughs> Take a moment to just let go of all the noise that's in your head. Just let that all drift away. And I'm going to ask you to, with me, just connect here with your heart right now. Okay, take a moment. <sighs> just exhale. So today I was actually going to talk about breathing, but I'll, I'll do that tomorrow or Monday. Um, so take a moment to just breathe into here, into your heart, and recognise all is well, all is as it should be right now. And just breathe into your heart and join me and we've got people from all over the world joining me here today. So let's ripple out love to the entire planet, to Mother Earth and to all the humans, all the animals, the insects. Just ripple out love. No agenda. Don't decide it's only going to go to this little corner of the world because that's where you are. Let's just ripple it out everywhere so it encompasses the oceans. Oh, just take a moment, be really still, just allow yourself, and even if this feels a little bit like mm, whatever, just go with it for now, hey, okay? humour me, and just let it ripple out beyond your suburb, beyond the city, beyond Australia, beyond all of the continents, beyond the earth, and just imagine that we together, with this beautiful little group who joined me here today, just imagine that we have all linked hands and we are literally just in a circum we're in a circle, I can't even find the words, <laughs> that we're in a circle around the earth. Can you do that for me? Can you imagine us all just joining hands and we're just going to beam love back to our beautiful planet to help with the healing, to help with the peace and to help with our sense of unity and compassion. Okay, oh, that's beautiful. Can you feel it? Can you feel it just to ease out there and just help us all? Can you feel the sense of calm? Or maybe it's just me. <laughs> oh, so can you feel that? Beautiful. Okay. So every day you have the opportunity to do that. You don't need to be with me, although I'd love your company. But every day you've got the opportunity to just beam out some love to your suburb, to your community, whatever your community looks like. And um, can we all maybe just as a final gesture of gratitude send love to all those who are on the front line and that that's, that's everyone, even those who are not necessarily always named in media and everything. And so, but anyone who is at the coalface at the moment in any shape or form, we may not know their names, we know, may not know their role, but let's just send love to all of those and our gratitude to all of that, them as we stay connected together. And the thing is, you don't have to break this connection just because this Facebook Live will finish. We create this connection constantly. It is constantly reinforced and reignited whenever we think of each other, whenever we take a moment to pause, to be still and just tap into our heart energy, we infuse that connection over and over and over again. So I hope you have found this helpful for you today, wherever you are. It never looks like I think it's going to. And, you know, I'm okay with that too because for me this is a time of sharing myself. This is not about having, oh, today I'm going to give you three tips to do X, Y, Z. There's a time and place for all of that. For right now it's about sharing who I am. It's about sharing what I'm aware of. It's about essentially sharing my heart with you. And I hope that it has helped you. I hope it has brought you a little peace, a little oasis of calm in your day, whatever your day looks like. Thank you for joining me for your morning teas, your afternoon teas, your wines, your suppers, wherever you are in the world. I'm just thrilled to bits that you choose to spend some time with me. I can feel that love coming right at me and I'm sending it right back to you. 
So thank you. And if there's anything that you would like me to talk about, um, and I'm aware that I know a lot about a lot of different things. They're just not always the things that a lot of people talk about. So if there is something that you would like me to talk about on one of my Facebook lives, feel free to message me. You can private message me. Um, it can be um, business related. I have no objection to talking about that and what I'm going through as a sole trader, um, you know, solopreneur. Um, I know there's a lot of you in that position as well. So if there's something that you would like me to share a perspective on, you know, reach out, private message me, find a way to, um, to let me know that, uh, ring me if you, if you want to call me and, and have a chat, always really happy to do that. And, um, Great. I'm glad to hear that that helped you relax, Rianne, and that's great. Love to you too, Renee. And Ron, thank you so much for joining me all the way from the States. Lovely to have your company from, from both of you. So seems like this time works quite well. Now, I'm not sure if I'll do one tomorrow. Um, I think I will, but it will be in the afternoon. It feels like it'll be the afternoon tomorrow, so it'll be afternoon tea. Might not be as long um, a session, but I don't know. It just feels really important to stay re connected with you on a daily basis at the moment. So um, I might make it tomorrow afternoon at, um, say, 3 p.m., all right? So if you'd like to join me, that's when the next live will be. So on the weekend, I might make it in the afternoon rather than the morning because, you know, there is, there are things that we need to do um, over the weekend. And even though our work life has shifted and every day feels kind of weirdly like it should be a weekend, <laughs> There's still like weekend things that we do. So why don't you join me tomorrow, 3 p.m. here on Facey. Um, thank you so much for your company. I hope it has brought you a little piece of calm and that there's um, that you can feel the love being sent to you. You have an awesome rest of the day and I look forward to your company tomorrow. Thank you for joining me, Jean Valjean, Javert and Fontaine and the rest of the cast of Les Miserables and um, who knows who's going to show up for the chat tomorrow. I'm really curious to see what characters from the theatre might like to come and join us. I'm going to go and find a different mug for afternoon tea. <laughs> so thank you my friends. Uh, beautiful to share time with you. Namaste.